going on everybody here today with another Bodhi Tree mental health video. On this channel, I talk about my own journey through mental illness, specifically obsessive compulsive disorder and severe anxiety. I wanted to talk today about the mental health care business. If you suffer with a mental illness or you struggle with your mental health, then you are probably coming in contact with the me mental health care industry. And the unfortunate part about you know our our system of of medicine here in the United States and in most countries is that it's very profit driven and um, there's nothing wrong with that when that profitability that drive for profit and um, financial gain is transformed into things that are ingenuity and in, in, in better medications and better um, technology and better treatments and therapies and and better training and um, overall a better healthcare system and in many aspects of our healthcare system that has been true I mean there's a big problem with affordability but the quality of healthcare has risen exponentially over the last hundred years under this profitability model so you know I'm not you know gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say that you know though the current healthcare system is just all bad and you know you know because you know the reality is is that you know, there has to be an incentive for people to do this work, to go to school, to get the training, um, and, um, you know, adhere to different standards and practice medicine at a high level. There has to be an incentive, like, obviously, you know, there has to be an incentive. There's nothing wrong with people making money off sick people. The problem is, is when people are making money off sick people and they're not helping the sick people and this is so far this is almost seems like it definitely in the anxiety and OCD community this is the norm I mean anxiety is the number one most common mental health condition problem people struggling with anxiety I think I just googled you know what percentage one in five people struggle with anxiety in the United States so this is like as common this is so common Imagine going to a primary care physician with strep throat or flu or cold or just some type of, you know, one of the most 10 common, 12 common things that, you know, a person sees and she's struggling to diagnose strep throat. Oh, your throat's sore, it's irritated. I'm seeing some white specks on your tonsils or whatever. Uh, I think you have a broken leg. I mean, you know, this is the type of, that would seem absurd. The prime, the, the primary care physicians, they know what they're looking, they, 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 the patients that they see, they know how to get them better but when you go to therapists people with master's degree and doctor's degree and psychiatrists people who spend 12 years eight years of medical school and three four years of residency and been in practice for multiple years and you say hey i'm struggling with this that and the third so often you know that person is misdiagnosing you they're giving you the wrong therapy they're putting you on the wrong medications it's like wrong dosages and just so on and so forth and i wanted to share my example you know I my first encounter with the mental health care system for OCD was probably very common I found a local therapist he had a master's degree in 20 years of practice and he seemed on the phone to be very intelligent and like somebody you would want to talk to I spent a hundred dollars to go see him for an hour and I told him I said I'm having these sexual taboo thoughts very anxious you know, I'm, 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 obviously, I'm sure I appeared, you know, like really distraught. But he basically told me, well, maybe I didn't appear the distraught because he basically told me he knew what severe mental illness looked like. And I didn't meet, meet that exterior, you know, I didn't look like somebody that was suffering. And he'd seen people that's really suffering with OCD. And that wasn't me. And he told me that I should you know, take a college class and accept myself for who I am. And I mean, this is what is was his response to someone who comes to a therapist with very, you know, specific symptoms. I'm having sexual taboo thoughts. I've been, I've realized that the last year I've been a hypochondriac. There's been multiple times in the last year where I've seen doctors and I've this and that. And, you know, I think I have OCD. And he didn't even say that I had OCD. He wouldn't even say that. And this is someone that I paid 100 bucks to for an hour, $100 an hour. 
or this type of treatment. You know, the response, a, a real clinician, someone who actually knew what they were saying would say something along the lines of, you're having sexual taboo thoughts, you're having, you know, you, you know, it seems like you've been struggling with this, you've been worrying a lot about your health, you, can, you know, you say that it's really affecting you, you know, you have an anxiety disorder, we probably classify this as OCD, you know, very, you know, this is a very difficult disorder to overcome, but, you know, we can get you the proper treatment and support, we're going to start off with a type of therapy called exposure and response prevention, would you like to try medication? We're going to move from that and we're going to start there just addressing these core fears. And then we're going to look at some other therapies in the future once you, your anxiety comes down to, you know, start practicing mindfulness and acceptance and start looking at how we can address anxiety in every aspect of your life. And although this doesn't make sense all right now, just know that I understand exactly what you what you're what you're talking about. I know exactly the type of therapy that we need to use to help get you better, and I'm going to be here for you across uh, along the way. And by the way, here's a group that um, of people here locally that I see that are suffering from the same thing. We meet every Wednesday. You can come there, and we can all work together and support each other. That's the type of mental health system that we need. Something like that. That's so sad. That's not a lot. That's like something you, you see for somebody who's like a drug addict. You know, someone comes in, they see, you know, they're addicted to heroin. You know, they, they know what to do. They, they put them on some, you know, some whatever methadone or whatever, and <coughs> they get them detoxed, and then they get them in like a 12-step program, and they get them counseling, and they get them long-term support. And, you know, there's a whole process for someone who's addicted to drugs or alcohol, and it's it's, 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 it's people know what to do. But when it comes to anxiety disorders or depression or these other disorders, it's like people are, the, the therapists are clueless. Most of the time they're misdiagnosed. So, you know, this was one therapist. I saw after that eight dozen therapists and only one of the therapists actually really knew kind of what was going on. She claimed she suffered from OCD before. I met many therapists that were struggling with anxiety themselves when I, you know, when we would talk and, it, you know, I had one therapist specifically who, I mean, was just telling me about her own experience and how, I mean, basically she was basically saying that she, she didn't, I don't even think she realized she had anxiety. So like I said, you know, one in five Americans have qualified for an anxiety disorder. So it's, it's extremely common, you know, people struggling with worry and stress. So, you know, it's a business, it's a business and we all have to be aware of that and we have to um, start to change um, <coughs> the patient's going to have to expect more out of the um, you know out of the mental health care system and and stuff I, I think the unfortunate I think the reality is is that the real the, the profitability in mental health is just not it's not there's just not a lot I mean for someone that goes to school like listen you know the skills that listen all the everything that I've learned about anxiety and OCD have come offline that's it from other people like myself but other people who have overcame OCD anxiety you know I, I pretty much knew generally what I was supposed to be doing to get better once I understood what ERP was what mindfulness was what acceptance was um read some different books now there's a whole lot of other things that you know, I've, had, I've I've also, you know, brought into different, you know, philosophy and changing different perspectives in my life. I've done some journaling. I've done other things to supplement. But the core things to address this, exposure and response prevention, acceptance and commitment therapy, mindfulness practice, you know, you know, not engaging in compulsions, not engaging in compulsions, not engaging, not engaging, not, not engaging, living with uncertainty, living with anxiety. I, I figured this out once I understood this is what I had and this is what I have to do. I, it was up to me, you know, I didn't need, you know, it, it's not like I was, you know, at this point, like I needed, I did need long-term support. I did need long-term support, but support is not therapy. 
almost near like a 12 step program for people with OCD where people can come in and talk about this is what I'm going through. It's so difficult. It's hard. And people like a bitch fest, you know what I mean? Like a fucking bit, a well, well warranted bitch fest where people can, you know, be human fucking beings about this is the journey that we're all on and we're all struggling, you know, and we can all talk about the steps that we're all making in our own lives and the obstacles, how it's affecting our relationships and how it's affecting our work and how we're trying to overcome it. And, oh, I had this setback and I had that setback. If we had, we need the support, but there's not, can't be a lot of money in support. Uh, hell, it's just, you know, we just need more support. We need access to the right information and we need more support in all of our communities around anxiety, mental health, stress, depression, these things. So anyways, this is just my opinion on the mental health care business. I hope this video finds you well. Peace.